Psalms chapter 76 <clears throat> to the chief musician on Nigioff, which is a string instrument, a psalm or song of Asaph. In Judah is God known. Well, you wouldn't say that today. It's going to be known in the millennium. It was known at the time of this writing this psalm. So it gives you a period of time when, when Judah was right with God. When the Queen of Sheba would come and search out God and Solomon. His name is great in Israel. Well, this is before the break of uh, Rehoboam and Jeroboam. Because Israel and the northern tribes, the ten tribes, break away from God totally. In Salem, which means peace, also is his tabernacle, Jerusalem, the city of peace, and his dwelling place in Zion, that's the mountain in Jerusalem. There break he the arrows of the bow and shield and the sword and the battle, Selah, Armageddon, Selah. David goes in there and fights uh, Jebusites. And proclaims the land of his, the city of David, Jerusalem. Thou art more glorious and ex excellent than the mountains of prey. And it's above any mountain, any common mountain where God's house is to be, where God's name is to be. <clears throat> the strout heart means strong, lusty, bound, <coughs> brave and proud are spoiled. Pride doesn't last long. Lusty doesn't last long. Holiness will prevail. You don't think it's real? Wait till the judgments come. The great white throne judgment and the judgment seat of Christ. And when we're in eternity, they have slept their sleep. And none of the men of might have found their hands. I don't understand. At thy rebuke, O God of Jacob, as I said last night, it's not the God of Mary, it's not the God of Rome, it's not the God of Iraq, it's not the God of America, it's not the God of Joe Smith, it ain't the God of the Jehovah Witnesses. It's got to be the God of Israel, the God of Jacob. It can't be the God of Abram. When Time Life or one of those magazines said Islam and, and, and Jews and Israel are of the same, no, they're not. Read your Bible. Ishmael was born on an Abram. Isaac was born through Abraham. And it's always been after that. Abraham, Isaac, Jacob. It's never Abram, Ishmael. Never. Get that. Know that. You've got to have the right God. The God of Abram, the Ishmaelites, the, Abra the, uh, Arab the Arabians is the wrong God. Both the chariot and the horse are cast into deep sleep. There was an army that was going to fight against Israel, and God gave them the spirit of slumber, and the angel of the Lord came in and wiped them out. There's a time that David goes into the camp of King Saul, and then God put him to sleep. And David walked in, grabbed the, the spear and the bolster, and walked out. God will give you sleep. You know, America is asleep. And if she reduces her armed forces, she'll be even sleepier. When we have an enemy come and attack the country like we did, like they did in 9-11, and then turn around and make excuses for them and say, oh, they're really not that bad, you are a sleeping nation. A sleeping nation that says, oh, we got this country that has weapons of mass destruction. WMD. Weapons master, yeah, WMD. And we go over there, we conquer the, the nation, we kill the, the leader thereof, and there was never a talk of the weapons of mass destruction. Where were they? America was asleep. Thou, even thou, God, art to be feared. You're to fear God. Jesus said, don't fear them that can kill the body. Fear him that can kill the body and cast your soul into hell. You fear the God that will put you in your place at either judgment, judgment seat of Christ, or the great white throne judgment. If God says no crowns, 
I don't care if you have a sissy's fit on the Toys R Us floor and weep and wet your pants and beat the floor and all that. You're not going to get a crown. I don't care how much begging you do. When God tells you the lost man to go into hell, you're going to hell. Even if every angel has to gather you up and throw you in there themselves, you will go. That's the God you're to fear. When the God says, go ye in all the world and preach the gospel, you better fear that God if you don't do that. When God says to do it, you better fear not doing it. And when God says not to do it, you better fear doing it. Who may stand in thy sight when once thou art angry. And there's the judgment. And that's going to be the judgment seat of Christ too, you know. You don't think God's going to be angry at us Christians? He thinks he's just, oh, I just, just love you guys so much. You haven't read Revelation 4. You haven't read the seven churches. You haven't studied the seven churches of Revelation 1 to 4. Out of that whole group of churches, only one church that stood above the rest. That's the Philadelphia church age. This church age makes God sick. He needs a puke bag. Thou didst cause judgment to be heard from heaven, and the earth feared and was still. There's the final judgment, judgment seat of uh, the white, great white throne judgment. When God sits as judge and pronounces the, the sentence, that's it. There is no appeals court. There is no uh, Supreme Court. There's no second chances. Whatever God says to you and me, that is it. Either he says, well done, thou good and faithful servant, or nothing. Silence. And God says, is his name in the Lamb's book of life? And the angel looks or whoever looks in that book and says, no, Lord, I don't see it. You don't get a do-over. The earth feared and was still. At the great white throne judgment, the earth is gone. So this is when the Lord Jesus Christ comes back, when he judges the sheep and the, the goat nation. Yeah, sheep and goat. You'll fear on what your conduct was to the Jew. Curse them that curse thee, and bless them that bless thee, Genesis 12 says. When God, when God arose the judgment <clears throat> to save all the meek of the earth, blessed are they the meek, Jesus said. That shows you that verse in Matthew is not church age doctrine. Selah. Remember I've been teaching about Selah? That's a musical rest, but that's also tribulation, second advent, millennium passage. Blessed are they are meek. Blessed are they that uh, That's not our doctrine, people. Matthew writes for a Jewish king. To Jewish people, Christ had not died yet. Paul has been not taught the mysteries. Paul has not been given the gospel to him to preach to us Gentiles. Gentiles are not even thought of. There's a woman that comes to Jesus. My daughter's sick. My daughter's sick. Let that dog go away, Jesus said. I'm only here for the, for the children of Israel. But the church go, it's us, it's us, it's us. And it's not. You'll be you'll be tried at the judgment seat of Christ for using it as false doctrine. That's Jewish. That's tribulation. Better not be proud in the tribulation period. Surely the wrath of man shall praise thee. 
The wrath of men, that, that, that doesn't sound like it should be pleasing. The remainder of wrath shall thou restrain. God's going to strap all wrath. God will end all wars. You know what the last war in the Bible is, finally? When Satan is loose from his thousand-year reign, he goes and gathers an army, and God says, you're gone. I mean, not even a, a, a sweat of God in, in this entire nation. And that's it. That's the last war. World War, I mean, if you look at the Bible, at least World War V. At least. But don't forget Armageddon. Don't forget that war, I forget, which, which was the third or fourth horseman? Revelation 6, is it? It brings war. There's at least three more world wars coming, people. According to the Bible. And if Jesus Christ fulfilled all the first advent, 100%, you guarantee all the all the tribulation, all the second advent, all the millennium, and all the eternal prophecies will come to 100%. There's at least three more world wars coming. And you're going to have a time that the Bible says there's going to be that great peace. And the Antichrist is going to bring it. Vow and pay unto the Lord your God. Now look at that. He actually says vow to the Lord. Is vowing things to the Lord wrong? No. What is wrong with a vow when you don't pay it? I vowed my life to the Lord Jesus Christ for the ministry. I want to be God's servant for people. I want to be his chosen vessel. I want to be his clean vessel. The time that I fail that vow is when I keep myself dirty. When I don't, when I refuse to be used by God. Let all that be round about him, God, be presents, bring presents, excuse me, unto him that ought to be feared. Well, that's an interesting. In the millennium, you're going to be you're going to bring presents to Jesus Christ. Today, He is the gift of God. To be feared, Jesus Christ is to be feared. He's to be reverend. I don't mean a man having the title as reverend. You you want to talk about blasphemy? Having someone call themselves reverend. That means you give honor to them. No, the only reverend in the Bible is Jesus Christ and God. You better remove that title off your name. And we're going to see people bring presents. Listen, you think it was a big thing that those Magi bought presents to Jesus Christ as a baby? Wait till you see the nations bring them to Jesus Christ in, in Jerusalem as he's seated on the throne. And you want to know where you can find a thing like that in the Bible? Read the entire story of the Queen of Sheba when she came to Solomon. There's the picture of Jesus Christ and the nations coming to him. The Bible says when Egypt doesn't bring the gifts and don't bring the things to Jesus, they're not going to get their rain. They'll be drought. See, we look forward to oh, the little baby and the presents and all that, but you didn't know that there's coming a time where they're going to give gifts to Jesus Christ again. You never hear that preach in the pulpit, do you? When's the last time you heard that preach after you bring those three presents? Listen, it ain't going to be gold, frankincense, and myrrh. You're not going to give Jesus Christ anything for embalming for you no more. He's got the victory over the grave. He's got the victory over death. You're not going to bring him embalming for you. They brought it because they brought it because of his death, of his kingly title, of who he was. The frankincense as the priestly office that was sprinkled upon the bread, the show bread. He shall cut off the spirit of princes. Death. Genesis chapter 2 says God breathed into him and man became a living soul. That spirit. That means there's no breath in you no more. He is terrible to the kings of the earth. And that don't mean he's a rotten God. I mean, he's a wonder. He's Wow, there he is sitting there. There is Jesus Christ, finally. And you know what? Can you think of a verse 
when you see Jesus, can you think of a verse in the Bible that will be made void for all eternity? Think about it. What's one thing you're not going to have as soon as you... Listen, if you were to die right now, what verse in the Bible would be void? No, well, not that one. How about Hebrews 11.1? 1? Faith is the substance of things hoped for. I hope to see Jesus. The evidence of things not seen. As soon as you see Jesus, there it is. Faith is done. Here are these nations that we today haven't seen. Listen, Jesus told Thomas, uh, "Blessed, you know, you you know who I am. Blessed are they that have not seen me and believe." You know, we're better. And, and be careful how I say this. You know, we're better than apostles, Peter, James, and John, and Paul. We've never heard or seen Jesus Christ. Yet what we believe. We're better. Thomas saw him. Thomas put his hand in the holes of his, of his body. We haven't done that. We live by Hebrews 11.1. 1. Peter, James, and John never did. John leaned at the breast of our Lord Christ and Savior. These kings in the millennium are going to be like, there he is. Wow. And as us saints who served the Lord and did right. Can you imagine those kings coming up to us and say, Hey, I just saw in that Bible over there, Hebrews 11. Can you tell me what it was like to believe in him and not see him? Only a Christian that served God can answer that. No Christian that didn't obey Jesus and his word can't answer that question. And that's the story of the millennium. I see the stars, I hear the rolling thunder, thy power throughout the universe displayed. Then sings my soul, my Savior God, to thee, how great thou art, how great thou art. Then sings my soul, my Savior God, to thee. How great thou art, how great thou art. And when I think that God his Son not sparing sent him to die, I scarce can take it in. That on the cross, my burden gladly bearing, He bled and died to take away my sin. Then sings my soul, my Savior God, to Thee. How great Thou art, how great Thou art. Then sings my soul, my Savior God to thee, how great the Lord, how great the Lord. When Christ shall come.